Editor's Apology and Dedication of Mr. Munchausen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Green. Mr. Munchausen. Being a true account of some of the recent adventures beyond the sticks of the late Hieronymus Carl Friedrich, sometime Baron Munchausen of Bodenwerder, as originally reported for the Sunday edition of the Gehenna Gazette by its special interviewer, the late Mr. Ananias, formerly of Jerusalem, and now first transcribed from the columns of that journal by John Kendrick Bangs. Editor's Apology and Dedication In order that there may be no misunderstanding as to the why and the wherefore of this collection of tales, it appears to me to be desirable that I should, at the outset, state my reasons for acting as the medium between the spirit of the late Baron Munchausen and the reading public. In common with a large number of other great men in history, Baron Munchausen has suffered because he is not understood. I have observed with wondering surprise the steady and constant growth of the idea that Baron Munchausen was not a man of truth, that his statements of fact were untrustworthy, and that as a realist he had no standing whatsoever. Just how this misconception of the man's character has arisen, it would be difficult to say. Surely in his published writings he shows that same lofty resolve to be true to life as he has seen it that characterises the work of some of the high apostles of realism, who are writing of the things that will teach future generations how we of today ordered our goings-on. The note of veracity in Baron Munchausen's early literary venturings rings as clear and as true, certainly, as the similar note in the charming studies of Manx realism that have come to us of late years from the pen of Mr. Corridor Walkingstick of Gloomster Abbey and London. We all remember the glow of satisfaction with which we read Mr. Walkingstick's great story of the love of the clergyman, John Stress, for the charming little heroine, Glory Partridge. Here was something at last that rang true. The picture was painted in the boldest of colours, and regardless of consequences to himself, Mr. Walkingstick dared to be real when he might have given rein to his imagination. Mr. Walkingstick was thereupon lifted up by popular favour to the level of an apostle. Nay, he even admitted the soft impeachment, and now as a moral teacher he is without a rival in the world of literature. Yet the same age that accepts this man as a moral teacher rejects Baron Munchausen, who, in different manner perhaps, presented to the world as true and lifelike a picture of the conditions of his days as that given to us by Mr. Walkingstick in his deservedly popular romance, Episcopalians I Have Met. Of course, I do not claim that Baron Munchausen's stories, in bulk, or in specified instances, have the literary vigour that is so marked a quality of the latter-day writer, but the point I do wish to urge is that to accept the one as a voracious chronicler of his time, and to reject the other as one who indulges his pen in all sorts of grotesque vagaries, without proper regard for the facts, is a great injustice to the man of other times. The question arises, why is this? How has this wrong upon the worthy realist of the eighteenth century been perpetrated? Is it an intentional or an unwitting wrong? I prefer to believe that it is based upon ignorance of the Baron's true quality, due to the fact that his works are rarely to be found within the reach of the public. In some cases, because of the failure of librarians to comprehend his real motives, his narratives are excluded from public and Sunday school libraries, and because of their extreme age they are not easily again brought into vogue. I have therefore accepted the office of intermediary between the Baron and the readers of the present day, in order that his later work, which, while it shows to a marked degree the decadence of his literary powers, may yet serve to demonstrate to the readers of my own time how favourably he compares with some of the literary idols of today, in the simple matter of fidelity to fact. If these stories which follow shall serve to rehabilitate Baron Munchausen as a lover and practitioner of the arts of truth, I shall not have made the sacrifice of my time in vain. If they fail of this purpose, I shall still have the satisfaction of knowing that I have tried to render a service to an honest and defenceless man. Meanwhile, I dedicate this volume with sentiments of the highest regard to that other great realist, Mr. Corridor Walkingstick, of Gloomster Abbey. 
End of Editor's Apology and Dedication